let me go ahead and save this file real quick while it's got layers in it and um, I'm gonna go ahead and merge this one down and that way when I come in on my new layer right now I can sketch in some starships and see what it starts to look like so um, now scale is an important issue here if I have these tiny people okay up here and down here and I have little cars and vehicles imagine if I came in sort of right here and I put this giant starship of some kind okay sort of docked up here it's part of the secret here for me now is finding uh, the right angle that I want to use okay what's going on my brush is acting real funky right now oh that's why oh that was weird it's telling me I was in mo one mode and then I was in another and it was working differently might be time to save real quick in case we got a crash. Let me start that part over. So, um, just map, draw this in. I was drawing that on a flat view and I shouldn't have done that. I'm going to come up here and sort of sketch in uh, this giant fish like looking mothership of some kind here. Get some real cool silhouette shape in here. All right, and I know it's a little hard to see. What I'm going to do in a second here is come back and, and erase off some of this underneath here so you can see what's going on. So now I'm going to come back here and grab my eraser and I'll erase underneath here. And we can see how our mothership is, this big giant ship that we have, how it's fitting inside our, our location here. And I ended it about right there because I didn't want it, I didn't want to quite over go over some of that detail right there with the people underneath here. Okay, I, I like them there, so um, let me go ahead and pencil in, oops, pencil in a little bit more information here on what I'm thinking, how our ship is laid out in a sense. I'm gonna find a center line in there, come down, and then start to come in and craft out a couple cool areas, a little detail. For our ship here and it's getting a little busy but that's okay I can come down here and uh, thin some of this down right now drop the opacity down on a little bit so I can focus on just uh, my little starship shape here so let me go ahead and finish knocking this guy out I wanted to get something sort of cool let me fix that maybe this comes in here and then down here there's like little connection things that pop out and I wasn't imagining this as a wing I was thinking this is converging off the back here but let me come back to that in a second Detail here, come back here, sketching some rough thruster shape or something in the back. Come back in here. I was putting this shape in right here, but um, let me go back and make sure I'm getting my perspective knocked in here adequately. I was imagining that there was like a fin coming off the bottom of this, this guy here, coming downward like so. Yeah. And what I might have to do is come in and, and to get this fin to really work, I'm going to come in and, and have to pull some of it out of the, the ceiling right here. Oops. Back up there, my brush was way too big. So if I come over here and erase a little bit out of here, 
and then I'm going to come back in and sketch in a couple, a little bit of a, see what kind of element shape I get. In here, like so. Let me drop down to the grid underneath here and sort of erase some of this detail back here. All right. That's starting to work for me. I'm really rough with this uh, my starship guy here, so I might come in here and really try to come in with that fuzzy eraser and knock them down a teeny bit and um, pencil in some tighter detail. I get a lot of rough lines in there. I don't know exactly. I wasn't sure exactly where I was going with them. Just trying to find some shapes. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Oops. Maybe not that much. I gotta get that line off the back there. Okay. So, and now what I'm going to do is um, knock some of my grid down a little bit like so. So it's a little bit easier to see them. And come back in here and tighten this guy up. So I think what I'm going to do real quick, just to shorten up the demo a little bit, I'm going to do this real fast with you and then I'm going to take a little break here and I'll draw it off to the side and I'll show you a couple examples for starships. Um, so I don't have you guys falling asleep on me here. I know I've watched plenty of demos myself and um, you know when I was uh, whenever I want to learn something I go find somebody who does it better than me and I go try to learn and see what I can figure out and you know what kind of cool cool education I could get from somebody else. So I've been there with you and trust me I've had I've I've had some bad demos before <laughs> where you're sitting here getting really tired. I took a demo in a sculpting class once. Uh, figurative sculpting in clay. And it was really cool, but man, it was just was really long. And this guy had a monotone voice, and it was really hard to sort of follow with it. So um, let me finish getting this these shapes in here and figure out what direction I'm going. So we'll be right back in a couple of minutes. Okay, I, I finished this up. Let me show you guys what I placed back in here. I came back into it and I developed the ship, the ship a little bit more. And uh, let me go here and get this layer on for you so you can see them really quick here. I have too many layers and I'm trying to cl click through them all here. So here's sort of my top ship, okay, um, back in place. And um, you'll notice that my grid down below it's really dark so I'm gonna go ahead when a grid I'm talking about my key background now as compared to my ship I'm gonna lower that down a little bit so uh, I'm gonna come in here and select this and just drop it down a little bit and see how much it fades it's a lot easier to read and I have a couple parts that were overlapping some of my ship in here so I'm gonna come back in here with my eraser tool now and I'm gonna erase off uh, some of these little segments here okay like right right in here oops there we go. Right in here on this edge, I'm going to erase that, get that out of there. Clear this part up here on the side. And down here I have a couple overlapping little edges on my ship here. There. <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. Um, and then what I went ahead and did is, uh, if I don't lighten this down, it starts to get a little too busy. Okay, and this is where making the next step into value and, and color would make a huge uh, difference in my piece here in terms of detail and uh, plus I'm imagining light coming up from the center of this um, so like a Frankenstein style lighting coming from underneath so with that underlit capabilities uh, a lot of what I have all back here would end up being a lot darker okay to focus on the ship so that was the first ship that I do I did and then I came back over and I started sketching in another ship here okay so I put a couple underneath right here Brighten those up there. All right. And then after I did that, I also came in and I established the left-hand side uh, overlay. So if I come in and pop this guy up there, you'll see that come up. 
okay? And then I also um, already had the right there drawn in before, but what I did is I separated onto a different layer, so that way I can keep this a little bit darker, okay? And, um, and then once that was all done, uh, so you can see now it starts to get a little bit busy, so if I come back down to my grid, I'm going to drop this down a little bit more so it gets a little bit lighter, a little bit easier to see. I came in, I threw in a little bit of value, okay? On my foreground elements here, just to sort of knock them in place and keep them being separated, okay, from the rest of the environment. And then the last thing I did is I put some small little detail. I came in and placed a couple little ships around the outside here. So if you see right over here, I have a couple ships. I have a couple ships back here flying around. Um, I'd probably come back in here as well and uh, draw a couple other little ships, you know, maybe one further down back here just sort of zooming by, another guy up here and something little down here, one guy going this way, another guy. I just like these little bits of little details and ships and stuff flying by and uh, just adds to the, you know, little bits to keep your eye moving. So. Um, the other thing I would probably do, without a doubt, you can see, and I do this quite often when I'm designing, especially going from thumbnails, is that I've designed out of my frame here, okay? So if I come in right now, I could grab my frame, and I could end up moving, oops, select all here. Okay, I can end up moving my frame around. Okay, one more time, get on the right layer here. Okay, there we go. And uh, I can move my frame around and see what might look like a better shot. So that looks like a pretty cool shot there, okay? Um, so I would definitely come in and reframe some of this because notice as I move it down here, that looks really cool with these foreground elements, okay? Um, right in here, I have these cool elements on the left and right. I got the ships going back in perspective, and that adds a lot. But then it pulls me away from my building a little bit. So I've actually ended up changing some of my piece here. So I think what I might do overall is just uh, delete my frame. And then I'm going to come back in here, and uh, you might hear a beeping sound from uh, Sketchbook Pro whenever I go to draw a frame uh, or hold down the shift button. It has this loud beep. So let me frame this guy up somewhere about here. And I'm liking, you know, even if I cut this off somewhere about like so. Okay. And I could come in even about here, I'd say and going across even right here uh, that really sets up my picture plane with a lot more depth a lot more information so this is a fun little sketch so um, let me go ahead I'm gonna I'm gonna crank out one more for you guys do a second demo but this time I'm gonna really speed up the the pace and show you my basic steps like I've been displaying for you before to save a little bit of time okay so thanks guys be right back Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I'm going to do another demo for you real quick here, but I'm going to try to speed things up a little bit so I don't get caught up on time. Um, what I'm going to do is I've already placed in a rough frame here. Um, I've indicated a grid line down. Um, I have my horizon line established. You'll notice right back here. I also have my horizon line labeled. Okay, And um, I also have came in and established uh, my vanishing points. I have VP1 going back this way. And you can see uh, maybe a little bit here, these little red marks on the side here. I've gone ahead and indicated some trace lines because I go way off the page here, uh, off my Cintiq. And then I did the same thing here on this side. I actually have it in a little somewhat closer. I'll draw. Uh, actually, you can't even see it over here. Let me draw some trace lines coming off. Okay, so you can get an idea of where my other vanishing point's going. So I have VP1, VP2. And then what I did is I came in off the top here. You can see these lines right up here on the top. And I have these lines going back to a third vanishing point up above. So to save time, what I did is I went ahead and roughed in the scenario I'm thinking. Again, I'm on a futuristic sort of loading dock. And so what I did here is I just placed in a couple of simple shapes. Okay, you'll see. So if I thin this back down, you can see where my grid is. And then I came in and just sketched these guys in here. And what I was thinking on this is I'm going to have one giant mothership, sort of giant ship here in the foreground starting to veer away and pull away from these other smaller ships in a loading dock, okay? Um, because uh, the way that I've laid this out, what happens is that since um, I have this mothership sort of turning like it's pulling away, 
I'm going to end up having the ship in its own perspective. So I thought this would, might be a good example for you guys how we're using three-point perspective when I'm going to end up having a ship that's going to be in two-point perspective. Okay, And then on the left-hand side, I have the rest of the environments and the other three ships sitting inside this loading dock or lined up. Um, and they're going to be back in two-point perspective. So let me show you guys here real quick. You can see this layer that I'm on here. Um, if I go back and trace back, I have a, a vanishing point right here on my horizon line. Don't get that confused with the wall line. My horizon line is right here. Okay, and then I have a, this other line converges back here like so. So that's my vanishing point, and then here's the side of my ship converging up. And then I have these shapes in the back here. They're all converging back this way. Okay, and they're all going back to this other vanishing point, okay, off the page. So, again, uh, of course it's possible. Some of you might ask, can I have an object in one point perspective or turning at a different angle? Well, of course you can. It's just like, I mean, if you take a look in your, your house or your art desk or your room, you're going to have things turned at different angles. Or gonna, some are going to be on, uh, like if you have a, a row of books, books stack on top of each other. Usually we put books away when they're stacked up side by side next to each other. So there's a ton of different ways that we can have things organized, okay? All right, guys, um, sorry about that. Didn't know if you noticed, I just had a little uh, computer lock up there. The uh, recording program crashed on me. So um, let me come back here and so you can see what I was just talking about at my basic shapes here. Okay, now I was talking about having the mothership right here um, sitting on uh, a different vanishing point versus everything else. Here's, you know, the furthest vanishing point is, is over here uh, to the right. And then I have one over to the left. Now, the one thing I did decide to change after stepping away for a couple of minutes, which is a really important thing to do, is I noticed my uh, third vanishing point where my buildings were, were uh, receding back to. They were, it was a little too close. So what was happening is I was getting a lot of convergence with the angling in. So what I did is I pulled it back a little bit. And by doing that, it sort of expands my cone of vision a little bit and it, it increases my viewing angle. Okay, so you'll notice here that these lines are a little bit more uh, lenient. The, the other ones were starting to converge a little bit more like that. So I, I went ahead and, and I adjusted that. And so, um, and again, I want to try to speed this up. I wanted to get a second demo in here. So let me show you what I did. I have my grid out here with my boxes. Okay, and um, I came back in and I started sketching uh, a mothership in there. Okay, so this is the ship that I came up with. Okay, and I, after I got that ship into about there, uh, I decided to come in and address these these three smaller ships over to the left hand side. So when I did these ships, I I actually just did one first, and I was able to copy and paste it because it's in the same perspective, just receding back. Okay, so. Um, let me show you an example of what I mean here. This ship right here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sketch on top of here on another layer. This ship right here that's locked in this perspective, um, it's almost the same thing going back here. So I was actually able just to copy, transform it, and match the perspective. And the only thing that I really had to be concerned about was that certain objects, like see this fin right here, that this fin, all those fins line up as they recede back in perspective. And the same thing was also going with the, the top of the vehicles, okay? So that's just a little side sheet I was able to do to save myself time of having to draw the ship three times over, okay? And so um, after I got that in, um, I noticed my ship, my mother ship here, was really close to these side ships. So what I decided to do is I decided to move it over a little bit, okay? So let me let me show you what I did here. Um, I'm going to sort of, sh I drew it on another layer to show you here. If you see, I have the ship over a teeny bit, and I also enlarged it a little bit. So I know it gets a little blurry. So let me turn off this other one here. And by moving it, all I basically did is just slid the object, just like I would slide a book on my table, and it just changed the vanishing point. Okay. So here's the new mothership now. And um, let me brighten it up in here. Okay. And now that I get that in there, I'm going to go ahead and, and pull off the... Uh, the box, the uh, the rough grid outline that I have. Okay, so we can eliminate some of the box layer in there. Okay. Oops, sorry, I was grabbing the wrong one here. Here we go. There. So now I take that box off, I can see it working a little bit. I'm going to leave it in there just really light, just to have a couple trace lines on there. Okay. And um, 
what I'm going to do now is I started to rough in a background. Okay, just really light here. Let me show you. Okay, so I came in off of this main blocky shape that I had under here. I'm going to go ahead and um, just demonstrate for you exactly what I'm talking about. I have this this nice rough shape in here, and I really like that. It sort of fits the composition well. What I mean is that it's not overlapping any shapes right in here and the eye sort of comes down and then it bends you back in here. So it's a nice little composition element um, it, and it keeps the mothership separate from this area over here. So I, I like that idea. So what I'm going to do is um, I came in here and it, I'm going to go ahead and punch this up and show you. I just sketched in what might look like a little bit of a rough building here. Okay, And then um, on top of this um, I have the indication that could be uh, for like right in here, this could be some type of, um, I don't know, like a an off, not an office building, but you know, like a command central tower or something like this. I was thinking this could be glass of some kind in here, but I don't want to go in there and indicate that as glass, and there's a reason why, is if I was painting this, I want all my detail to stay centered right here around my mothership. If I come in over here, and if I take my ruler here real quick, and if I start penciling in uh, a ton of lines here for glass, what it's going to do is it's going to start to make this shape over here really, really busy, you know. And I I don't want to do that. Okay, go back and do this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and simplify this in the back and just sort of leave it there. And um, I might. Since I can't add detail to the glass, I'm going to come in here in a couple minutes and sketch in some other detail information or shapes up on the top that make this building look like it's important. Um, I'll put some antennas on there, some type of light or something, uh, some type of a uh, little structure add-on that overlaps the shape that helps establish a little bit of depth. Okay, so let me come back. Let me finish and go over here and lighten up. Uh, I mean, darken up these small ships right here. Okay, get them to about the. That's pretty cool. And what what I was trying to establish here right now in this in my layout, uh, my environmental layout here is that uh, the mothership. I wanted it to feel like it was sort of this this large giant ship that looked a little bit more um, unfriendly, like maybe it was used for battle and transport. Versus um, these little these smaller ships over here to the left that are in the docking bay. I wanted those to feel sort of like like subordinate ships. And so you'll notice what I did. Let me go over here and turn the mothership off. Part of my design is uh, resembles that of a um, of a dolphin, okay? Because dolphins are sort of friendly. They swim around. They don't really do anything, you know. Um, uh, that they don't have really mean shapes to them or anything. So if I take my mothership and I pull it down here, you'll notice that. Um, let me come back here and get the right layer. Where's the small ships here? You'll notice that I I have this sort of real nice dolphin shape in here, okay, with these little fins that come out, and the shape goes back. Um, I did all this on purpose, just to have these look a little bit more friendly, so they don't compete against the mothership, okay? So you know what? We're we're sort of branching into a new level of of designing here for you guys, because not only are we talking about perspective setting up the scene and having some composi compositional elements that weigh within each other. But now we're also moving to a new area of design where we're thinking about uh, incorporating and designing shapes around shapes that are mimicked in nature that help convey a certain feeling to us. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and let me delete this layer that I put up there and let me get my mothership back in here. And I, I didn't want to do any more pre-sketching for you. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to sketch in the ground plane because my ground plane is going to be very significant on how I pull off the rest of my set. Um, the, the only thing I did pre-sketch in is I came in here and I started to put a couple background buildings in. So um, before I had just a couple loose scratches when I had my boxy shapes in. Let me, let me show you that again here. If I bring this up here a little bit, um, I started indicating that there might be a little bit of information back there. So I'm going to turn this box off all the way. And let me come back here to the background layer that I put in. 
and I just very lightly just started sketching in a couple buildings like this. Okay, so you'll see as I darken these up right now, you'll see the type of uh, of detail, uh, I mean, of overlapping shape and detail that I start to get. I have little bits of detail down below, and it really helps establish a little bit of depth. Um, and then you can see the buildings uh, working as they are converging um, this way. Uh, converging up to my third vanishing point. Okay, so see how these lines are connecting right here? Okay, they're all matching up in perspective. Okay, so um, I really like the way this is going and what I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to come in and wrap up the uh, the rest of the information on, like I said a minute ago, on the, the ground plane because this is really going to help me establish what's going on here. And so um, I have a couple ideas to throw at you. Um, to, to really pull this off, what I wanted to do was um, come in and, and have a bunch of work vehicles and guys and hoses attached to, to these three smaller ships over here on the left-hand side. Uh, and then this mothership will be completely open underneath. And so that way it looks like it's, it's, it's pulling away from this docking area and perhaps going off and going somewhere else and versus these other three little dolphin ships aren't quite ready yet and so they're still being worked on and they're being loaded refueled and uh, they're going through some type of maintenance check okay so uh, give me a second here and let me get all my layers prepped I'll be right back and then we'll sketch in this background uh, detail on okay uh, everything's all set up here what I'm gonna do for you now is I'm gonna go ahead and sketch in here a little bit on my ground plane here I think the, one of the ideas I was having was to really separate this loading dock area from this mothership. So um, I mentioned I want to have some detail on ships down here, but I think to do this, I'm going to go ahead and sort of sketch in a couple of light lines coming this way. And I was thinking about having maybe like a little bit of a cliff drop in here. So I'm going to come over to the vanishing points that I have and see if I can't pull this off, if I can get this to... Now, I'm really close to the horizon line, so I get a really condensed area in here. But let me see what happens if I do something like this. Sort of bring this little some type of edge in here, and maybe I just drop it off like that. And immediately I start to get this open feeling right here. And I can actually end up coming back and bringing my buildings down in a couple minutes here. Uh, or I could even fix some of this and make it look like it's on a separate plane. So I I'm sort of liking this direction right now. So I'm going to go in here. What I'm going to do is I have that grid still on. I'm going to go ahead and knock my grid, grid off. I don't think I really need it anymore at this point. And um, you know, it's just using it as a, as a guideline. It helps me see and establish depth a little bit. That's why when we were doing the thumbnails, I mentioned to you guys, it's so important to have that that set up. But um, you know what? I just realized I have all my vanishing points sitting on my grid. So what I'm going to do is just putting it in here. Uh, you know, I'll bring it back in here, and I'm going to take my eraser. And I'm going to thin down all this blue that's in here. So let me go in here and erase a bunch of this because I want to keep my uh, my little indications for my my vanishing points there because that's going to save me time of having to figure it out all the time to make sure I'm right on with what I'm drawing. So there we go. That's pretty cool. Now it's separate. Still have my uh, vanishing points in there. Go back over here to my background background layer and um, now let me see if I can come in here and fix some of this up and we'll start drawing and sketching some more in here. So let me see if I grab this, this edge off here. I might want to I always come back and change some of my picture frame too. That's in here. That's edge. Maybe I might modify this part of this edge here a little bit. See if I can get it to overlap some of this in here. And maybe as it comes forward, it uh, opens up a teeny bit more than how I have it now. Maybe something like that. So let me erase interior line here. I want to try to get as much room as I can in there for my my little spaceship uh, maintenance crew to be working on ships and detail in there. So that's pretty good. 
me thin down this line a little bit here. There we go. So it's not such a thick dominating line. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to erase. I was putting these lines in for direction a couple minutes ago. I'm going to take these out and I'll put some other lines there in a second. Okay. Just a little bit bigger. So you know I might just take take out this interior line and I'll come back to that. There we go, that's pretty cool. All right, and then let me, I'm gonna come in now and sort of put a couple of lines across. I have these little supports here for some type of you know, arch that might be up here loading something. It's like a support arch for part of this this uh, loading bay here. So let me come back in here. Let me get my exactly where I can mark this for myself here. Um, let's see if I come in here and put a little a couple little trace lines coming off of this like that. Let's see if I can get them. You know, I'm going to redo these that line. I'm going to make it nice and light. Got a little dark there. And uh, since I'm I'm so close to the the horizon line right now, I have a lot of it's going to be hard to, to get some of these different shapes in here. But I know I can do it. I just have to be think about how I'm drawing these interior lines right here because again, I'm so close to the horizon line that it's so easy for them just being off the thickness of the pen make them can make them look wrong and and um, make the perspective totally off. So I'm just going to match up some of these points. This is what happens when you get this close in. It's so slight. So I might come in here and pencil in a couple little detail squares or lines receding back. So it starts to look like there's some type of base ground plane there. And then I'll come in and let me see. Maybe over here I need to have a a couple other shapes here and see where this ends up taking me. I was thinking I should have, I might have some type of hangar door open, but I um, haven't really figured out what some of this detail is going to be right here, so I'll do this in a little bit. Just sketch in and see what I come up with right now and where I'm going with some of this. Keep that line separate. Leave some of that alone for now. Pencil a little bit more information on here. You know, I like the thought of this being a, some type of driveway door for these little ship, little maintenance crews to be working on. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little gate here and make this recess through. Put a line like in here, like I'm looking through it. There. A little crooked there. One of the downfalls of uh, you know when you're working here on a on a Cintiq or working digitally, you can't really sharpen your pencil. You know, you try to get it as tight as you can, but that's basically all you can do. And maybe I'll put some cool little detail elements in here. I'm not going to worry about 
too much of what's back there. I'll soften that in a little bit here. So I, I like this this feeling though because now it feels like you know I have this separate edge here, and it feels like these ships are being helped. You know, Let's see what kind of cool. Maybe I can think of something that fits in here pretty cool. This would be really fun if, if I was painting this in black and white. I can just go over here and pencil in some of this detail really quick. But when you're doing it in line, you want to try to get it to be pretty on. A little light that sticks up here. Upper hangs part of this. Shape here. I can come back and erase some of that later, and um, I like that. What if this? How this wraps over? It might go over like this, and it's a like a, a warning light on the loading dock here. And then it maybe it drops off down here a little bit. Let me see if I could put a couple other elements in here that might be. Useful for my design. Okay. I'm getting these squiggly lines in my Cintiq today. We have to just go nice and soft over them. There we go. A little bit better. Oops. Ruler slipped. Come back in here. There we go. Cool. See, I like that. Now it really pushes this this uh, mothership as being totally independent and separate here. I'm going to come over here too. Remember I talked about wanting to put some glass up here? Now I, I really can't do that because if I do, there will be a ton of detail that will be taken away. So what I can do is put a couple light lines in here and have a little bit of suggestive detail. And then I'll come in and pencil some type of shape on the top here that looks like it might be interesting you know something light like that and see if I can just get a couple light little lines in here yeah just really light and suggestive at this point I don't need anything more than that That's pretty cool. But what I'll do maybe to pop some of this here, I mentioned about putting like an antenna or something up there. So um, I like how this shape right here is popping, you know, wrapping around here. So I'm going to wrap some of this up around here, see if I can't bring some of that down and have it overhang like that. So it makes it feel like there's some importance here. Let me erase this right here. So, something like that. Okay. Now, I just noticed I made a little mistake there. I didn't match the angle of the window frame. There we go. That's pretty good. And then maybe I might put some little weird, some cool, funky design element in here. perspective that almost slip in the ruler here and then let me see if I come up here okay come up on the top that's sort of cool it's something like that just rough it in nothing major and maybe I have it's funny I want to put a satellite dish in but here we are in digital times and imagine being in the future. I don't know if satellite dishes will be something that we see on a regular basis or not, but you know, 
What the heck? Maybe I'll pencil this guy in right here. Let's get this for the play shape or something. I don't know. Let's go here. I'll probably change my mind on that in like 20 minutes and come back and take it out. I already didn't like this part here. I just put it in there. It's too much. Okay. Yeah, I'm already changing my mind on it. I know, I'm picky. This is cool. There. Looks like it's, you know, some type of headquarters. Something's going on up there. It makes it look a little bit more important. So instead of putting too much of too much detail in here for windows, I've now placed a little bit more indication uh, in this top section. Another trace line or two in there for the bottom part of the window here. So lightly. There we go. Cool. So I think I'll leave that alone there. Again, too much detail will kill it. Uh, I don't want to have, I already have plenty of detail over here around my mothership. Um, what I'm going to come in here now is let me figure out what I'm going to do with these back base buildings. I did have the idea of having maybe a loading ramp come out here in perspective and be separated so it looks like it it changes and then maybe that's affecting the mother ship somehow so i think what i'm going to do is do that on another layer here okay and so this was my idea for this little uh loading ramp that might be popping out what if i have um this ramp shape sort of come in here See, maybe I'll pull it back to somewhere about there. Put a couple little elements on here that make it stand out. Maybe change some of the height. Okay. And then what I can do is I end up having this uh, cool shape. This will read a lot better once I if I come in and put a little bit of tone on it. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. Because then what I could do is I can come into my buildings here. See, and I can keep putting a couple of lines coming down to make it look like it's these buildings are huge. And they're going past some of this information here. Yeah, I'm liking that. That's looking pretty that's fun. So I'm gonna come back here on my um, let me see which layer was that on there. There we go. Okay, label this layer really quick. I'm gonna call this my BG overlay. Okay, and I have that down. Let me move it up and put it up here. Come back down here and uh, I'm go back to my BG. And now I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm gonna erase off some of these extra little lines that I had down here. So I don't need these now. I'm gonna have them overlap. I can always change my mind again, you guys. So, um, yeah, let me come in here. I might modify a teeny bit of that right here. Make it look like it's part of this is going down, I think. Maybe there's a step there so I can see a little bit. That's cool. Back to the BG and Now I'm going to put, I had this little, these guys here on the end here. Let's 
So I'm going to jump in here. Maybe I have some indication of like a little bit of spares or something. And uh, let me finalize some of that little bit of this detail here. Rough this in, and then maybe what I can do is come back over here and then drop this down a little bit so you can see. that it drops down like that. And then I could have a little bit of, I know I'm getting a little bit of a tangent here on the picture frame, but that's easy, that's no big deal. I can always change the, the picture frame. That's actually something that I do quite often. I'm gonna put a couple overlapping shapes in here now. Okay. And Trying to pencil in maybe some interesting little shapes or segments here. There we go. Not quite sure what what I'm going to do with this here. I might modify it up a little bit. I think it's a little bit different. And maybe I'll put a little composition element here of an antenna coming off the back of this thing, pointing right up at the mothership, of course. All right, and. Um, all right, so uh, I think what I'm going to do here is now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to sketch in a couple of our ships back here. I'm liking the way this is going. I'm going to do the most important thing, which I probably have not mentioned to you guys yet, so I'm going to save my file because uh, I have a tendency sometimes to work and forget uh, where I'm pacing myself at. And then I, you know, all of a sudden the machine crashes. Uh, actually, I had uh, the other week all the air conditioners were on here in California and uh, had a power outage and uh, oof, I was right in the middle of something and it just everything crashed and I was like oh no please don't so it's always good to try to save every 10-15 minutes if you can okay so let me jump in here I'm gonna sketch in a couple ideas here for these uh, little little guys on the side okay a little maintenance crew here so you know I've established a teeny bit of scale over here in the background let me grab this layer bring it down here okay and um, I noticed I really might have slipped when I drew this little line in here. I'm going to fix this right here real quick. It's actually going to be really hard to even see that proceed back. I'm taking some luxuries here with the thickness of the pen. See, I can't even get it to, it's like barely, it's like literally just barely above the horizon line. It's a little bit better. Of 
cool. There we go. Gonna do it, do it right. There we go. Okay, so there's my little opening here. And now, you know, I'm just gonna, just to rough in here, I'm just thinking a couple, you know, throwing like a little ship shape of some kind. It's a, it's a ground rover wheels or something. And uh, I'm going to have a couple little people standing around here. And then let's uh, throw some hoses in here and stuff. So maybe there's like a little connection hose and Wave right there. Here's a couple little canisters of something down here on the ground. Let's get another, another hose shape here. Another one coming off the other side, maybe. Uh, Break up some shapes, put something else over here too. Maybe it's like a little work area of some kind, and again, frame this off a little bit. A couple little lines. Is I'm going to come back and thin this down. I don't want to get too much detail in here. And that's already getting a. It's getting, there's a lot of bit of detail in here, but the thing that I know is that, see, this is in a line drawing phase right now. So if I take this and put value in it, the value will, will diminish and get rid of a huge amount of uh, all this detail in here. So I sort of like some of the detail sometimes. I find, you know, when you're working in a studio, environment and you have to supply drawings to painters they like having uh, the the decision and the discretion to figure out where and what they want to paint in terms of details having detail is better than having no detail all right so that's pretty cool there's something going on there there's some people over there moving around and um, let me come over here I like my um, I like that a lot let me come over here and just trace back a little bit of their scale. Put you know a couple people here, and maybe I can overlap a little vehicle. Let's see if I can erase just a little segment here on the back of the line drawing. Yeah, like that. And I'm gonna come in here and put like a little round vehicle of some kind. Yeah, like that. And let me see if I can't fit another one over here somewhere. I'm thinking round vehicles that shape shaped like maybe a turtle. They're friendly. They don't look like they're destructive or or anything. Look like they can they move items back and forth. That's cool. Like this. All right. What if I darken up a line here? Get right on my point here. Pretty cool. I don't 
don't need that in there. I'm just noodling now. That's cool. So I'm going to leave that alone there. I've got some people there. And um, I think for the final touches, just to wrap this up, I might put some type of shape up here in the foreground that that points me up to the mothership. Uh, something that I was already thinking of doing is having some type of um, foreground element. This is something I just threw in real real quick. I was just roughing in this, this little guy here. You know, like an arm or something reaching up here. So um, that's it's a little off in its position. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this guy. And uh, put a couple other. So maybe I can end up having something like this here if I want to. Let me figure out what I was doing with the rest of this, my background line here. Let me just double check this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish up this little foreground element. I just had this little idea just now about having uh, part of this bridge point off. So let me show you what I mean here is having this little second part come in here like this, like so. And I could put make it look like some people are walking in there and, and uh, going into that direction. It's a little added feature and then to continue and it helps point me back into the composition as well, which is nice. And then I'm going to continue the front of the bridge. If it was matching up to this line, you see that? Okay, I'm going to sketch this back in here. And then it allows me to come in here and get a really sort of nice like, overlapping shape in here. And let me add a little bit of uh, thickness to this in here. You guys can still see this. So I'm, I'm drawn off of my, my detail here, um, off of out of the frame. I, I mean to say, and so, but that's okay. I, I could still keep, continue to do this because I might end up changing and coming up with a better composition this way. And uh, maybe I need to have a light here. Yeah, lights are good. You always need to have lights everywhere. You have to have warning lights so people don't run into this railing. There you go. Some type of little segment detail there. I'm gonna have something here that's a little thicker. Cool. I like that a lot. That that really helps to to push me back in my composition here. And I might have this curving off like so. So then I could finish up some of this, so maybe this is still dropping here. And let me show you what I'm what I'm getting at here is I have part of the underlay of detail coming right here from where this where the rest of the walkway was. So I can place a couple lines down here to help to indicate that and let me make sure matching up to my third vanishing point because these lines are receding downward right so about right there like so and you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and match this to my vanishing point even though I was thinking of curving it to the surface I'm gonna go ahead and put it in like this and right here is about straight When you get over here, it's going to be more angled, like about there, converging back. There we go.
All right, let me tighten that up. Let's just rough on that freehand. Go. A little segment detail in here. Cool. All right, now what I can do, this is my idea about just sketching in a couple foreground shapes. So I had one thought was to point me back towards my mothership a little bit. I could come in here and uh, imagine if I had some type of claw right here in the foreground. So maybe this is, it's like a futuristic, of course it's futuristic. It's a large robotic claw that's hooked up somehow and somebody maybe drives it in the back here so let me just sketch in a couple of rough shapes and see where this takes me maybe there's a little elevated platform in the back here yeah and it's gonna be like just like a forklift it's gonna have a heavy bottom so it can't tip over or anything and maybe this mounts back here and figure out some cool shapes in here to make it look unique. You could do this rough and then come back later and clean it clean it up. And now here's the big question, do I want to overlap the shape? Okay, so uh, maybe I don't want to overlap the shape to keep a little bit of significance to the mothership. So I might come in here. Maybe this guy is moving some stuff on the platform here. Maybe there's a bunch of containers over here. I've been moved in. A bunch of boxes and stuff, items stacked up here. Okay. And I can take my little... spend a whole class and just talking about robotic arms. It'd be so cool. So much fun to think up and draw this stuff, you know? Okay. And then maybe coming down right here. Some little segment. Put a couple of hoses on this guy. And there's his little claws coming off. or something here. See that just helps this helps push me back into the composition, this little rampway here, back in this way. So I really like it. And um, I'll come back later and maybe this is part of the the structure here. I gotta clean this shape up here. It's really rough right now. And that's fine. It works for what I want. Let me scatter a couple around. So I'm going to go ahead and put one in here and turn it off. Turn it to the side here a little bit. Maybe there's another guy here. Another shape here or something. Okay. There is that other guy there. There. I'm going to move him over. Then let's create a tangency right there. A couple other people down here. So that's pretty cool. You know, I, I like what's uh oop, my I didn't even realize. I'm sorry about that. I apologize. My brush properties was up blocking the the side of the image there. So I have you know, I like this foreground elements in there. Uh, if I were to do anything else to this piece besides clean up just these foreground guys in here. Um, I would probably add a couple building elements in the background, just extremely light. So why don't I do that with you really quick? Let's go back here and find our, uh, make it my building layer. I've got like 10 layers on this thing now. Here it is, background buildings. And um, I'm going to be very careful just to reiterate this. I mentioned this earlier about if I draw a building, so you watch right back here. Okay. Like this. Let me match up with the 
see what's happening. The building looks funny because I'm out of the cone of vision. So um, guess what? It's a good idea when I'm doing a three-point uh, establishing shot like this of um, any particular area that I try not to draw out of the cone of vision. So what I can do is I can come in here and I still have some cone of vision back over here that's not too bad. I could see what would happen if I had maybe the front facade or something of like a building top there. And I have, you know, this this isn't too bad here. Could be a, a nice little overlapping soft element shape in between beside there that makes it look feel like more like a city backdrop. Okay. So what do I do over here on the right then? It's sort of empty. That's easy. I'm just gonna come in here and and place in some type of shape that blocks this. It's not a building heading off in that direction. So let me just put a couple, I'm not going to raise it up too high. I'm just going to put a little blocky shape like this in here. Just go off of the vanishing point right now. So it's receding and it comes all the way down here. I'm going to watch my repetition right there, these linear lines going down. Just have one big one, maybe one small one, a little bit of detail or something. Bring that down like that. Okay. And, um, I might make this so it looks like some different segments. And that's all I need to, you know, if I even, I need to match that line in there going back towards. If I could put a little antenna on it or something. There, it's going to keep it simple. Just that, I wouldn't even do anything more. It's just something to add as filler. And I'm going to take my eraser, and uh, since I was sketching this, I'm going to get it thinned down a little bit and just go over it, push some of those lines down. I don't want there to be any detail on this back building. It's really of no importance at all. It's just a little side filler for me at this point, just rounding off, you know, lost and found edges at the base of my composition there. Okay? So um, if I wanted to, I the only other thing I could do is I could put a couple little buildings in the back. But you know what? I wouldn't even bother doing that right now. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say buildings. I meant to say uh, little floating like spaceship guys like this. You know, just to help indicate a little bit of scale or someone flying through the city or, you know, I did that before. Nothing major, just a couple little tiny little gizmo shapes here, not a little sound effect ships going through just something tiny like that now I, I don't to be honest I wouldn't even go that far what I would do at this point um, since it's just a line drawing I would go wait till I go into tone and see what I end up coming up with and to see if I want to do that so um, I think the very last thing I might come in here is separate uh, a little bit of this this foreground overlay so let me come over here and I'm just gonna put another layer right here grab my airbrush Come over and take some blue and just sort of see what happens if I come in here and, you know, pencil in a little bit of airbrush information right in here. So it helps to pop this plane a little bit. That's pretty cool. I like that. There. A little bit of detail in here, a little bit of darts. 
pops that little red there. Keeps it locked in. Cool. Um, also, right here on the antenna. Yeah, point me right up to my mothership and darken that guy up. Get the side here. Okay. Cool, so I think that's it for, for this particular piece. I'd leave it alone from this and uh, really look forward to going in and uh, doing um, some tone work on this or moving it forward. So, uh, well, thanks guys for hanging in there. I try to speed this, this second demo up. You know what? You might have noticed it takes a lot more time doing a demo like this because it's in three-point perspective. It, it literally doubles and triples your drawing time. So that's why I try to save you a little bit of your viewing time in here and because um, uh, you not only are you having to check two vanishing points you're also having to check everything that's converging up to a third vanishing point so that can be a little strenuous on the on the time and the constant moving of using the ruler back and forth to establish the right trace lines going back to the right vanishing point but and then at the same time I'm sort of designing as I go so um, thanks for hanging in there and um, we're going to wrap this up and move on to the next lecture. Have a good one, guys, and um, uh, put some time in your homework on this. It's probably going to double or triple for you if you've never really worked in two point, uh, going from two-point to three-point perspective. So that third point will add quite a bit on there. So thanks, guys. See you soon. Homework for Lecture 4. Uh, continue forward, do some three-point perspective thumbnail studies, as many as you like. The more that you guys do, the better off you're going to be. Uh, take one of your three-point perspective thumbnails that you like and draw a larger, more developed rough for me to look at. Uh, follow the steps as we mentioned in lectures. Also, uh, give yourself a little bit more time with three-point. It takes a little bit longer. Frame your drawings, expand out your frame if you need to, and start with simple boxes first. Uh, when you're finished with, with your boxes, then add in the details. Establish your composition and your thumbnails and save yourself some time. Have fun drawing, guys, and I'll see you next week. Thank you.